Hello, everybody, and it's Stacy again, and we're here at the Advisor with our very special guest. It is Rebecca Vigas, and she is one of our top ten wonderful, amazing, great uh, people in our podcast community who talks about writing, and she shares about legacy writing, memoir writing. She talks about writing books, and she gives you a lot of great advice because a lot of people out there, over 98% of the people out there want to write a book, but they don't. And today she wants to talk about what have we learned from our story. And she has some great advice about writing books and about story writing. And she's here today and she has some great topics that she wants to go over. And, you know, Rebecca, once again, it is wonderful to have you here. I'm so excited because you have your podcast with our community. So anyone who wants to go and visit her podcast, she has amazing podcasts that she shares on all different topics. So to check out her podcast and Rebecca. So tell everybody a little about storytelling and the importance of it. And also what have they learned from the stories in their lives and how they can use them to help others. Okay. Um, storytelling is the oldest form of of language that there is i mean people told stories of the history long before the gutenberg press was ever even invented right and we have come miles from the gutenberg press i mean we can do it on our computers and just whip it into a printer and have it yeah I had a classroom full of students and the school had brought in this woman who was going to teach the teachers how to teach writing. Mm -hmm. I just rolled my eyes <laughs> and some of them all turned and looked at me like, what is this? Are you doing this? The answer was, no, I'm not doing it. It was a friend of the superintendent at the time. And she was a very nice lady and she came in one day and she only had 15 minutes to spend with us. And she wanted the kids to write a narrative story. Okay. Narratives aren't real long. One mm -hmm. to two pages, usually maybe three, but you know, that would be your real high achievers. Write more. It's better. Right. Which is not always necessarily true in junior high, but. Mm -hmm. Go for it. And then she walked out. And the kids are going, we don't understand. What does she want us to do? And I looked at the teacher I was team teaching with and says, I got this. And she just nodded because she knew. And so I go up to the front of the room and I said, I want you to think of a time in your life That was really happy, really sad, somewhere in between, or maybe a time that you got in trouble. Anything in your life up to this point that's a memory, right. something that you were involved in Maybe it taught you a lesson. Maybe it changed the way you thought about things. Mm -hmm. That's what she wants you to write. I said, so close your eyes. Take a couple of deep breaths. And in your mind, picture one of those occasions I said something happy. Something sad, something somewhere in between, mm -hmm. a time you got into trouble, pick one memory and just start writing it. I don't want you to look at spelling. Make sure you put capital letters at the beginning of sentences. 
and periods or question marks at the end. Make sure you put in paragraphs. You know how to do this. And just write. We'll work on them at another time so you can polish them up and make them good. Right. But I want you to write. Now, open your eyes. Every pencil hit the paper. Even my special needs kids. Every pencil hit the paper. Nobody said, I don't know what to write. Because they know my answer to that is, I cannot shrink myself, walk into your mind, start the gears, and have you write. It doesn't mm -hmm. work. Right. This is me. This is what you get. I cannot climb into your ear. Mm -hmm. I cannot travel to your brain. And they always laughed at that, but they said, you know, Miss Vegas, you're right. We got amazing stories. Then we got one horrific one that we had to turn into the school counselor. <laughs> and then she had to turn it into child protective services. Um, Let's focus on the good ones. <laughs> but you know what? It was his cry for help. Yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. And we saw it for that. It was probably the most honest writing I'd ever seen from this young man. In, in the long run, it turned out all right for him. Mm -hmm. um, he was not taken from his home. But his parents were put on notice and things had to change and they'd be checking in weekly. You know what? He got all those repressed emotions, all those fear, all those anger, all those, those things that were probably so repressed and he was so fearful of, of letting go. And he used, he used writing a form of storytelling to get all that out of him. Yep. And and in the long run, he probably didn't realize he was going to get an uh, outcome where he was going to get external help from other people. But yeah. that was, like you said, a cry for help. Mm -hmm. And it actually worked out in a good way. He did. He he did. He was very succinct. Um, it was just amazing. But in the long run, each one of the kids in that classroom wrote from their heart. Yeah. Which always makes it better oh yeah and they wrote what they knew mm -hmm. they didn't have to come up with some topic they wrote about something they remembered and a lot of them it was a fun day at the park with their cousins or you know they'd gone to the beach or they actually took a vacation for the first time most of it was good positive stuff yeah um, somebody wrote about the loss of a friend mm -hmm. who had died the year before, um, who attended the school and it was a great tribute to her friend, but she also noted at the end that cars aren't toys and Racing them down a two-lane highway is never good. Right. Especially when you see lights coming at you. Mm hmm And so, you know, it doesn't have to be earth-shattering. Yeah. It could be as simple as the day I learned to ride my bike right. by myself. You know, no training wheels, nobody running along beside me. Rode my own bike. That's a big deal to a kid. Yeah. And it's a milestone. Right. You know, it's it's kind of like kindergarten graduation is a milestone. Mm-hmm. 
eighth grade graduation is a milestone. Mm -hmm. And then they get to really graduate after 12th grade. Right. I think it, it's it's wonderful to be able to learn how to story tell because it could be so beneficial in so many ways. Mm -hmm. you know, it could be it could be uh, a, a ability to, to help others. It could be ability to help yourself, you know, and, you know, it could it do so much for a person. And a lot of times. If you're going through something, the loss of a friend. um you were in a car accident mm -hmm. because that's a trauma. If you're going through something, anything, your parents are getting a divorce. Um, writing about it is the best way to express your feelings. Yeah. If you can put it into a book, just an ebook. Maybe ten thousand words. Mm -hmm. Sell it for a buck ninety nine. Somebody's going to read that ebook, right? And they're going to say, "I'm not alone out here." Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like I chatted with a cousin on Facebook last night. Not talked to her in a while. And she said she finally knows why her legs have always been heavy and why she can't seem to lose weight no matter what she does. Mm -hmm. And so I asked her what it was and she told me and it's like, I want to cry. She's in constant pain. They cannot put a blood pressure cuff around her arm and take her blood pressure because the pain drives it so high. They're afraid she'll have a stroke. Mm -hmm. I'm going, how on earth do they take it? She says, they hooked me up to a machine. I said, okay. But I mean, it's, when you hear this, she said, as a kid, it didn't bother her. Right. But she's got lipidemia, mm -hmm. not lymphedemia. That's different. Right. Lipidemia is you have lipidemic fat. Mm hmm Body can't get rid of it. Right. And since no one ever diagnosed this, from childhood to adulthood, it's interwoven in with her muscles. And she says, I've been doing a Mediterranean diet, 1,200 calories for years. And she said, just last week I lost weight. She said, but at this point, I'm not trying to lose weight anymore. I'm trying to see if I can somehow force this fat off my body because there's no cure for it. Right. And I think maybe if she'd known this or her parents had known this when she was little, mm -hmm. that maybe there's something they could have done. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But by the time you get to adulthood and you've got this, you have chronic pain forever. And she said, I could sit here and do nothing mm -hmm. and become a vegetable. She said, but I have to really think about what I want to do and say, is it going to be worth it? Right. But she makes goat milk soap and sells it mm -hmm. and so yeah she's got to work um she's got something else she's doing and i don't remember what it was she used to sell real estate she can't even do that anymore yeah 
And that's sad. So she uses writing as the source of, of help, helping her to get through it. I told her to journal it. That she could turn it into a story of overcoming adversity. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it is. Yes. He said, you have to make a choice. Am I going to sit here and become a vegetable? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to do the best I can with my life? Right. I feel like it doesn't even matter where you live in this world. That storytelling could be something that anybody in any part of the world could relate to. If they could just take one segment of that story and mm -hmm. it relates to them in some way where they feel a bond to that person that, you know, some of the information, you know, that was placed in that story or some of the hope and some of the motivation, that energy kind of, it kind of travels to them and gives them yeah. that faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope that they need to move forward in life, you know? And I think storytelling is so powerful because I feel like it could change so many people's lives, you know, and it doesn't matter where you live, how different you are from each other. Storytelling is such a powerful tool of healing the mind, body, and soul. It is a powerful tool if people listen to the stories. Mm -hmm. Because and even if you don't read them, if you listen to a story, history came down through storytelling. Right. Very true. Man wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. Man altered the Bible. Right. I know this because King James did. Mm -hmm. And one of my ancestors was one of the scribes who worked on that. He left sections out. He didn't think they were necessary. Other sections got added. They fit King James' beliefs at the time. Mm -hmm. up till then the only bible you had was catholic mm -hmm. and the monks translated all the stories and they read all the letters the apostles had written right and they became books of the bible mm-hmm I wanted a white Bible with the gold on the edges mm -hmm. of the pages. And I said something about this because I hadn't been able to find one. Right. And a friend said, do you care what kind of Bible it is? What do you mean what kind? Well, Catholic or Protestant. I said, no, a Bible is a Bible. And she said, you're wrong. And she got me a Catholic one for my birthday. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean for her to run out and buy me a Bible. I mean, that was not the point. But I opened it and I found all these books in a Bible that were not in any of my King James Bibles. Mm -hmm. They were the most interesting things mm -hmm. I had ever read. And they thought, why were they left out? They were a history. They had nothing to do with the apostles. They, it, they were Old Testament books. Mm -hmm. And they were histories. So my bet is they're in the Torah. And when I inherited stuff, I inherited all the family Bibles. Mm -hmm. I inherited an Anglican Bible. 
that would be the Church of England. Mm -hmm. That would be King Henry's Bible. And it's different. Right. And it's amazing to me. Um, NIV is the other one. It's new something version. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what the I stands for. International maybe. I don't know. But. It's written. In a more straightforward language. It's taken out. All the V and thou and things like that. Right. It doesn't distract from the stories. Mm -hmm. It makes them much easier to just say, go here and read this section right. to this section. And you have one of the stories out of the Bible. But it's fascinating to me how different they are. Right. Right. Um, I have a friend who's read the Torah from cover to cover, the Quran from cover to cover, and the King James version of the Bible from cover to cover. And she said, you know, they all basically say the same thing. <laughs> Very true. They're, they're so close in what they say. Now, the Torah and the Quran only go as far as the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Because they're still waiting for their Messiah right. to come. Mm -hmm. Which is another difference, but they're still stories. Mm-hmm. And we recorded history the same way. Right. You know, all the War of the Roses, um, Julius Caesar conquering all these different places for the Roman Empire. Um, all of that was oral history mm -hmm. until someone wrote it down. Right. What do you think is the best way to start storytelling for someone who, who really wants to um, start, you know, that really wants to either write a book or wants to start putting their stories on paper so they can maybe have a collection of stories to maybe write, you know, a book that way, because you could write, a, you could write one whole story or you could write a collection of stories. I've seen people write, you know, tons and tons of stories in one book. And it's very interesting, a couple of pages, you know, a story, and then they went to the next story and it just flowed. And yeah, you know, they've done it in anthology format mm -hmm. where it's only two or three pages to a story, but the story is all based on the same theme. Right. You know, whether it be fantasy, horror, mystery, thriller, suspense, whether you're writing children's stories, mm -hmm. an anthology, if you want to just dabble in it and get started, short stories are the best way to go. Mm -hmm. Now, I started as a poet. And then I moved to novels. Mm -hmm. Big leap from poetry to novel. Oh, yeah. And when I first took on a novel and I was going to write 50,000 words and I'm going, I'm never going to get 50,000 words. Mm -hmm. And when I did at five minutes to midnight on November 30th, I typed at the bottom of my finished book, Lord, Thank you for getting me all the way through this. <laughs> Who's going to help me with the edits? <laughs> <laughs> because I knew it needed to be edited. Yes. Um, and cleaned up and all kinds of things done to it. Right. If I hadn't done kamikaze writing for mm -hmm. 21 days, 
where all you do is write. Right. Every spare minute of the day, you write. Right. Weekends, I wrote all day long. I got up for food, water, tea, bathroom. That was mm -hmm. it. Then I was back to writing. Right. Um, two days of solid writing and 20,000 words later, it's like, wow. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't measure my books by words anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. I write the story till it's done. Mm -hmm. So I have a book with 40,000 words in it. Who cares? Right. The story's done. Exactly. That's all that matters. Yeah. And it's, it's like, okay, I could write a tome just like J.K. Rowling's. Mm -hmm. It's not my goal. Right. My goal is to write a story and get people talking about all the things that we don't talk about. Exactly. Stalking, arson, death. Right. Um, death by murder. Mm hmm Spousal abuse. Mm hmm Child abuse. Right. Those are the things I write about. Mm hmm Because I want people talking about them. Yeah. 100%. Not all stories have a happy ending. Mm hmm I did a collection of short stories called Damsel's Distrust. Yes. And one of them will make you cry. It made me cry while writing it. If it doesn't make you cry, you have no heart. Um, <laughs> everybody who's read it said, where did that story come from? I said, headlines. Mm -hmm. Newspaper headlines. How do you think someone could actually start writing? You know, if you had to give people some tips and a, a few steps, how could people start getting into story story writing and, and get into actually beginning a book and being able to go through the process? Okay. Take it a, a notebook with you. It doesn't have to be real big. Mm -hmm. But take a notebook with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Put one beside your bed. Right. Because you never know when you might wake up in the middle of the night and say, I got to write this down. Mm -hmm. Then, as you see or hear things when you're out and about, jot down what it made you think about or how you would have reacted had somebody said whatever to you. Right. Look at a local newspaper if you can find it. Mm hmm or local news on the internet. Right. For your hometown. Mm hmm Read the little tiny articles. The ones they call space filler. They have maybe two paragraphs. Right. Then ask yourself how and why. I did that. In a small town on vacation where the police were serving a warrant. And when they got there, there was a god-awful smell and flies were everywhere. <laughs> so they said they were going to open the door and do a wellness check. Mm -hmm. Because the person's car was, lady's car was there. Right. But she wasn't answering. So, I don't know if they picked the lock or pried the door open. Mm -hmm. But the minute they open the door to her trailer, millions of flies come out. 
Oh my goodness. These guys are backing up, covering their faces. They pulled out bandanas and put them around their mouth and nose before they went in. Mm -hmm. And they went in and smell got worse and worse and worse until they were at the master bedroom at the back of the trailer. And they can't find her anywhere until they open the bedroom closet. And here she is. She's dead. And she's obviously been murdered. Mm -hmm. And somebody set the air conditioning low. And so the smell wouldn't start right away when her body decomposed. Right. And that's why she wasn't in court. And that's why the judge issued this warrant. Right. So they get out of there. And they call a crime scene in the corner and their bosses and whoever else they had to call. And they put up crime scene tape mm -hmm. before everybody got there. And when everybody got there, it was a zoo. And that's basically all there was to the article. Well, I had questions. What was she doing court for? Who would want her dead? Why did they want her dead? And why did they hide the body? Right. Be a great story. Oh, for sure. It's on my back burner. Mm -hmm. I might write it someday. Right. But I have put it out there as a writing prompt. Mm hmm And said, give me your best shot. Because 10 of you can look at this and give me 10 different stories. Right. And I had put it on LinkedIn. And one of the comments was, I'm going to write this so it can be a movie. I said, I'd love to see it when you get it written. Yeah. I'm still waiting. Um, It's been probably a year mm -hmm. since I put it out there. Mm -hmm. Run with it. Right. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. It's not my story to tell um, in real life. Right. But I can fictionalize it mm -hmm. For and sure. answer my questions that I had. Definitely. Now, if you had to take everything that we talked about today and you had to sum it up, what would you like to really emphasize about storytelling and writing and being able to get your story out there? What What are some things you want the listeners to understand about storytelling? One, keep a journal of ideas. Mm -hmm. two if one of them really clicks with you or you have a memory that really has stayed with you mm -hmm. write it right we're not talking 50,000 words we're talking maybe 750 words right that's two and a half pages yeah because they figure 250 words to a page. Right. Most people can write two and a half pages. Mm hmm Some can write four. Right. If it takes four pages, write four pages. Right. Type it into your computer, write it longhand, whichever is good for you. Right. If it's a worthwhile story to tell someone else, Mm -hmm. A younger sibling, a friend, mm -hmm. memorize it and tell a story. Right. I like that. Tell it as a story. See what kind of reaction you get. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. And, and it may be a little different each time you tell it. 
Right. Because you may have, find a different word you like better mm -hmm. than a word that you wrote. Right. And so you'll go back in when you're done and you'll change that word. Three or four stories later, you might say, why did I write this word? It mm -hmm. should be this word. Right. It's okay to do that until you have it where you want it. Right. Where you tell it consistently every time, not changing a word. Right. Exactly. Then you have told your story mm -hmm. and you can write your story or polish it up. One story done. Right. Move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Now that you know you can do it. You and can... then practice it in front of an audience. Right. Five or six younger kids. Mm -hmm. Five or six of your best friends. Some of them aren't going to understand why you want to write a story if you're a teenager. Mm -hmm. Ignore them. But even as an adult. They don't have to understand why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. They need to accept that you're doing it and just give you feedback. Right. I think Does this is a great way to actually, you know, even for adults to, mm -hmm. to work on, you know, moving forward to get their, their book published if they want to yeah. write a book. Exactly. A novel is a set of characters that something happens in the first chapter, mm -hmm. in the first three or four pages that they have to take action on. Right. The next chapter is the action that they take. Mm -hmm. Now, there are consequences for every action. <laughs> some are good and some are bad. Right. The third chapter is going to be the reaction mm -hmm. to your action. How is it going to be, good or bad? Mm -hmm. Do you have to start over because it didn't work? Right. That's your next chapter. Chapters don't have to be eight to ten pages long. Right. I have a book. We're in the chapter. I have two different things going on. Mm -hmm. So I might have a page and a half. And then I have some little decoration. Right. That separates that section from the next section. Both sections are related. Right. But they're not. They're happening. Happening simultaneously not yeah. one after the other right because the next part is happening to someone different right i like that and the next part may only take up a half to a page right or three quarters of a page before you're back with your original ones and you finish out the chapter I like that advice. I think that's great. Now, what services do you offer? Pardon? What services do you offer on your website? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, I have a lot. Um, I have a book called Let's Called Writing or Let's Write Fiction. It's a self-guided book through it. I'm preparing a course in which you might see me in a video for 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you will do what the assignment is right, right there in the workbook. So that you have the workbook and you have me teaching it. Right. And no, I'm not reading the book to you. Mm -hmm. Not even thinking about it. I'm going to give you the highlights of what are in there mm -hmm. and tell you what you need to do. And how you need to proceed. Mm -hmm. 
and then there are pages with lines. Knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. Because there are more lines than you'll probably need in some of them. But it gives you lessons on dialogue. It gives you how to build your character. It gives you how to develop your setting. Mm -hmm. What does it take to make your plot move? Right. And write all the lessons. Do them all. Read all the, the in-between stuff. I've given you t story excerpts. Flash fiction. Um, personal narratives. Intros, um, first chapters from some of my books, mm -hmm. uh, a dialogue from partway through one of my books. It makes sense to you when you read it, mm -hmm. um, but to see how people interact. Um, and these are all courses to help you improve in your writing skills. This is one course. But it will be like little segments mm -hmm. of me, and then you get to do the rest on your own. Okay. And it's self-paced, and you'll be able to do that and do the rest on your own. Uh, the only thing you need for it is my workbook and a pen or a pencil. Excellent. Whatever you write best with. Right. And if you're doing this and you're using the same characters throughout, you are building a novel. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole point, guys. <laughs> now, where can people find your website? It's at RebeccaVigas.com. That's R-E-B-E-C-K-A. V as in Victor. I, G as in George. U, S as in Sam. Dot com. And your book and all your courses will be there? Books are there. Courses are listed under What well, are they listed under? Um, I look at it all the time and I don't even remember. Hmm. It's on the website though, right? Programs. Programs. They're listed under programs. Um, I knew it started with a P and it wasn't product. <laughs> you went blank for a second. <laughs> no. And we the books, all have the books are under books. Mm -hmm. Um anything else on there is background on who I am. There's a free webinar at the bottom of the first page. Mm -hmm. It's free. It's not real long. And it talks about why writers should write. Right. Right now. Not next week, next month, next year. Start now. Exactly. And you are never too old to start writing a book. Exactly. You're never too old. My first novel came out 12 years ago. Wow. Yeah, you're never too old. And, and anyone that thinks that, you know, I've been in many classes where I, I've gone for classes and I thought, well, maybe I'm too old to do this. And I go into the class and everyone's my age or older. So you're never too old to do anything. That's so no, true. No, you're not. Um, I started my, my writing 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was... 58, mm -hmm. 57, right in there. Um, no, it was even 55. I had to be 55 because I retired at 56. Mm -hmm. And by then I already had three books out. That's great. That's great. So <laughs> the first time I was not self-published mm -hmm. and was with a, a true publisher, um, was 2011. Okay. 
when the Macy series first hit mm -hmm. print, I was with a small press. Now, if people have any questions, if they have any questions they want to ask you when they're going through your website, or if they're looking to do one of your courses, they can just contact you and your, there is, there's a contact me page. Okay. You can ask questions. You can, I will answer them. That's not a, a problem at all. Um, you, you can make suggestions if you see something that looks funny to you or wrong. But definitely you can ask questions. And I check it every day, sometimes a couple times a day. But it goes to my regular mail account, mm -hmm. which is open all day long. Excellent. And I just check it when I see there are messages up there. And there may only be three or four, but I'll go check them. That's great. I mean, if you ask me a question, you want an answer. Mm -hmm. And so I want to answer it in the most timely manner. I like that. This has been great, Rebecca. Thank you so much for being on the show today. You really provided a lot of great information and a lot of inspiration and motivation about storytelling. I think it's really, you know, you've really gotten the point across that, you know, storytelling is an important factor and not only can it entertain people, you know, through a book and, and through fiction writing, but it could actually help people in, in yes. many ways. And, you know, all you need to do is very simple to get started. It's not as hard as people think, you know, just baby steps, little by little. Right. The and process. most people think oh, I got to write a thousand pages how am I ever going to do that? You don't have to write a thousand pages. Exactly. 50,000 words is approximately 175 pages. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, when I was being coached, and this is after I had all oh, about 12 books mm -hmm. in print, at least 12. Um, one of the things that the coach said is aim for 30,000. Right. You know what happens? You just keep going. When yeah. You hit that 30,000 mark. You get inspired. Because you know what you're talking about. You know what you want to have happen. Mm hmm And even if you're writing nonfiction. Right. <clears throat> shoot for 30,000 words. Mm-hmm. You've done the research. You know what you're writing about. Right. Just start writing. Exactly. You know what, Rebecca, thank you so much for being on the show today. This has been amazing. And you know what? You are a true inspiration to all people out there who want to be writers or want to improve their writing skills. Everybody go to RebeccaVigas.com and she will help you improve your writing, help you get started if, you, if you've if you always wanted to write a book or help you just to put the words in your heart on paper. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for being on the show today. I really appreciate your time. And you've really provided a whirlwind of knowledge today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. You have a great day. You too.